right now. About to witness the awesome man uh, crushing might of the U and G as Robinson show. <laughs> Stop it! Oh, wow. Welcome, my friend, to a show that seemingly, apparently, never ends. Yeah, this is version number three, oh, eight of the Eugene S. Robinson Show. I'm your, your host, Eugene S. Robinson. I got a lot to talk about. I have a explaining to do. And it won't be one of these, nah, uh, there you go. Most likely. It won't be one of those bitch head April Fool things, because I hate that shit. Not gonna do it. But 308, we got a lot to talk about. Not so much. I could that I could have done it yesterday. I'll explain all that. Let Bob Riley sing us in like he has every single week since 2007. The record is called Calling of the Just. The song is called Intro, All of Nothing. I had bumped the music uh, since 2007. Uh, still available from Revelation Records in Huntington Beach, California, where they shoot their death in a nightclub. Get your car with a hammer and run your mayor, broke them out of town on the rail, over at the substandard restaurant in Central Florida, where he was declaring that he's broke. Listen, listen well. At you. Now I'm taking a real good look at your face. So being paid back is always nothing. Uh, uh, all right, all right. We got a lot to talk about because it's like, hey, Matt, hey, hey, Mr. Ashley. If, for those of you who remember what that's from, it was from one of the seasons of Midnight Caller where I played uh, a dealer. Uh, 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 a, a, a crack house guard and the guy, the Shakespearean actor who got the role opposite me, uh, his first line, the college educated uh, uh, Shakespearean actor who was playing opposite me as I was the guard in the crack house. He was the dealer in the crack house. His first line was, ain't you Mr. Ashley? <laughs> I said, hey, man, you studied Shakespeare, right? You know, you can deliver that line any way you want. You know, you're an actor, man. You get out there, you act your ass off. You do, you know, you don't have to. He, he, he's like, yeah, yeah, I got you. Action, uh, camera, lights, s- speed, rolling. Ain't you, Mr. Ashley? Oh, bro. It's still available online. You can still watch it if you'd like. So, hit you, Mr. Ashley. No, no, no. Some of the worst writing I've ever encountered in my life. And I said so on the set. <laughs> they brought Leon out from Madonna's video. I'm sorry to segue so early into the show. And he stumbled down the stairs. He's really like all method, crackhead method. And he's super believable as he comes stumbling down the stairs. And they say, hey, man, says the Shakespearean actor playing opposite me. He goes, hey, man, that was Sky Mad. That, that, that was... Uh, something, whatever his real name, the character's name, and he said, in his day, he could really sky. And then my line was, well, today must be his day, because he's sky high now. Yeah. Uh, Jesus H. Christ. Yeah, you know what? I made a bunch of change on that, but you know, it doesn't make a difference. Anyway, this is round 301, 308 of the UGS Robinson Show Stomper, and going backwards in time, uh, uh, those of you might not remember, might not remember that Sunday, Easter Sunday, he is risen. He is risen. Nah, he isn't. Easter Sunday that I was going to be in Venice Beach at Kiss Kiss Tattoo 
doing a signing. A friend of mine's wife came in and goes, did we miss the reading? I go, no, no, no. There's no reading. It's just a signing. And she's like, well, at most signings, they have readings. I go, if I was going to do a reading, it would have said reading. It's just a signing. You're sitting at the desk. You all can hang out as long as you want. Sign your books that you buy from me and bullshit with you for an hour. Actually, it went two hours and uh, it was a good time. Only about 10 people showed up, but they bought all the books on hand so that, you know, 15 15 books I had sold uh, and nobody can $400 is the highest we got uh, the bidding for the tattoo. You know, I sign your book, you sign me that, that promotion. Uh, but it was great because one guy, the guy who offered $400 said, I'll give you $400 for this, but I don't want to use my name. And I, as a, no, nah, it's gotta be your name. Cause I don't want to go through Dick Hertz and Mike Hunt and Ben Dover and all the jokey names and some, some wag might like me to tattoo on my body. He goes, no, no, it's not a made up name. It's Caitlin. Chakugian. I go, hey, she lost her last fight. I'd rather die for other reasons than have her name tattooed on my body. Keep your money. So I never got the tattoo, which is fine. I think I'm going to revive it and have it be a long-standing thing. In other words, anybody at any time, if you got thousand dollars burning a hole in your pocket, you give it to me. I'll tattoo tattoo your name on body. Typeface, font size, location of my choosing, but you will know, and it'll be visible to the eye. That's the only promise I make you. Everything else, I'll do. Uh, so think about that. Uh, it's mostly for crazy, <laughs> yeah, Amanda Hungers. It's mostly for crazy Oxbow fans. But uh, if you're ever at a point, just think of it. Remember. So that, that's what I, where I was yesterday, and I had some time to uh, I had some time to 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 do it in there. But I would have had to do it from the middle of a tattoo parlor. And that's just going to be kind of weird. So they consequently no Sunday show. But all of you guys are subscribers, right? So you can watch this on Monday. Because you can't watch it live if you're at work. I got you. But on Monday, uh, well, let's not talk about that. So one of the interesting things that happened, like I said, I'm going backwards in time. And uh, this is like confidential shit. So let's see. Uh, I'm not going to talk about uh, it's just something I was like, man, folks in the show are going to love this. This guy, uh, let's see how I can, can see. He. He worked in the uh, uh, restaurant trades, right, in New York City. And uh, he had a friend. He said, the only, it came up because he goes, the only nickname I've given. Do you ever have a nickname? Yeah, my, they used to call me Stooge in high school. Like, Stooge, he's, where's that from? I go, it's a combination of Stooge and Eugene. So Stoogene, they would call, you know. And uh, and he goes, you like this nickname? I go, yeah, yeah, well, I loved it. It was great. You know, not many people called me it, but yeah, enough. I liked it. I liked it better. That huge people would call me sometimes. E-U-G-E, huge, which would get transmogrify into huge sometimes. Uh, but these are the only nicknames I've had. The ones that I don't, they never call me Gene as well. No, I don't, I'm not digging on that. In fact, if you watch and you pay attention, most of the men who are Eugene, who have you call them Gene, are pieces of shit, documented. So, ah, there we go. I have Mr. Lee's here. So, um, Dixon, what's, no, <laughs> no, nah, nah, don't fake names. Uh, so, any, any, you know, so I get sounds. I think I'm alone in the house, but I hear sounds. So, um, so we're, oh, so this guy's working the restaurant trades and he's given a nickname to this guy and he calls him the time bomb. Like, why do you call him the time bomb? He goes, cause the guy had a temper problem. Not the big, that big of a guy, five foot eight Irish cat, you know, kind of would go off, but he was a gr- with the greatest waiter I've ever seen. Like remember your order, you know, so uh, one night, some uh, some cats from the Gambino crime family come in. And the, the owner of the restaurant says, look, uh, Carlo has just gone to jail. So it's some underbosses, but they're big guys. He knew who they knew who they were. He said, I don't want only, I only want two people service in that table. One waitress and this guy that they both knew before for drinks. That's it. The whole night. Do not fucking. So everybody hears it. This guy, let's call him, let's call him Tommy. So Tommy's in the kitchen, sees these Gambinos roll in, 
what the what the manager didn't know is that Tommy has been in and out of prison and was a known associate. So not a friend of theirs, but a you know friends. So Tommy looks through a little window, sees him out at the table, and was like, "Oh, yo!" Walks out and is like saying hi to you know the guys that he knows. The manager, of course, is dying. But then he sees he sees that he knows him, so he's not going to give him a hard time for this. And I was like, ah, um, "What do you call it? Uh, you know, a uh, a mesero for the mob, a way, a way, oh, the mob, the, uh, the mob maitre d, Tommy." And he's like, kind of pauses for a bit because you can see that I don't see where the story is going. And he goes, "Well, Tommy's not with us anymore. In 1989, he left the planet." I go, oh, who was it? Cancer? She kind of looked at me. He's like, well, no, not cancer. They shot him. Somebody shot him. Uh, I guess if you're in that business, you can't be having a nickname, the time bomb. Well, I mean, they shot him. Was it a kid? He said they shot him five times in the face. Now think about that for a second. Five times in the face. Now, you think about shooting somebody once in the face, and that person is not still going to be coming at you. So you shoot that guy once in the face, he drops, and then you're trying to send a message to somebody somehow, some way, you stand over him, and you empty the gun into the guy's face. private anyway thanks was it try not to die between now and next sunday uh by by the um by the uh uh the memoir look what you made me do show the book one more time don't die bloody don't die <laughs> Thank you.